Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and this is my video about how comic stores and diamond distributors are pointing fingers at each other as the industry collapses around them. So me and Ethan were talking about all the craziness, you know, from uh, the uh, comics pros. There were, you know, pencils down. There were a couple of layoffs, but the time when that stuff really happens is usually in the fall, and then a, usually there's another second one in like January. So if you have a corporation, you know, you're getting towards the end of the year and maybe you're, you know, you're a C, you know, you're, you're on the executive board. You're like, oh geez, we got all these people. So you, you cut people, you cut people in November for a lot of reasons. Number one, it helps. Oh boy, our payroll expenses really went down in December. Wow. You guys are really doing great. Um, I actually had a, uh, uh, when I worked as a temp at Dell in the nineties, we got through the fourth quarter, you know, building stuff for the holidays. And then they fired us like <laughs> right after Christmas. Uh, and then they like a month and a half later, later, they tried to rehire us all. They're like, oh yeah, well, obviously you can't run a, a factory with like half of the people used to have, but they basically just did it for the numbers and to look good. Um, but that was like Dell when Dell was successful. It was just a numbers game. In an unsuccessful dying industry, it is going to be a freaking bloodbath. Uh, specifically, November, December, January timeframe. And those people who survived November and December, here comes January. Here comes a new quarter and you're on the chopping block because then they want to start that new year off uh, well. Um, so... Uh, Comic stores and diamond distributors clash as industry reopens. The distribution company denies complaints it is intentionally charging more during a time retailers are getting back on their feet. Our base shipping rates have not changed, but the landscape in which we are all operating has. So uh, I noticed that a lot of my tales from childhood sound like I grew up in the 1800s, sound like my peers were Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn. But anyway, one of the cool things to do in elementary school was go out to the playground and seesaw. Now, um, I, I feel like I don't see seesaws at playgrounds anywhere. Like seesaw was mandatory in like any, you know, 20th century American playground or park. Now I don't really see them as much. So seesaw could be a lot of fun. Although there were a couple of factors, you know, there's, there's a, a bar in the middle that the seesaw, you know, uh, rotates on and the height of the bar plus the length of it. What I'm saying is if that seesaw was long enough and the fulcrum, whatever was high enough, when you were at the top of that seesaw, you could potentially be six feet up in the air, which is fun. A little scary, especially if you're a little kid, but here's the deal. There, <laughs> you learn about evil in the world and the evil in your own heart when you seesaw. Because at some point, you're going to be seesawing, having the greatest time. Maybe the other kid's like a grade, a grade above you, knows a little bit more about the world. And then all of a sudden, that kid will stop and he'll just sit at the bottom. And you're like, what? what's going on? Why, why'd you stop? Well, I'm up in the air. You're at the bottom. seems like I'm having more fun than you. You're just sitting on dirt. And then you'll see the look. The look of pure evil. And then that kid will just... It didn't work well if you slid backwards. You have to kind of go to the side. You go off to the side and then there's no counterweight and your ass slams into the ground. Literally. Your spine shoots through the top of your skull like something out of Mortal Kombat. And the first time it happens to you, you're just so shocked and hurt. Like, I didn't know I lived in a world where stuff like this happens. Then time will go by and you will be seesawing and you'll be looking at that motherfucker and you'll be like, you start slowing down. He's like, where are we, where are we going with this? And you slow down. You go, oh, hell no. And it slows down and you're on the bottom this time. Maybe it's the guy who did it to you. Maybe it's some, hey, life's tough. And then you just go over to the side, 
Wham! <laughs> and then, then that kid slams his ass into the dirt. Um, so what I'm saying is that's basically what comic stores, you know, no, uh, comic publishers and uh, Diamond are doing to each other. They're both, they were seesawing for a while, and now they're both taking turns, you know, uh, jumping off, you know, and slamming the other person into the ground. So I'd actually gotten an email from a comic store uh, owner uh, a day or two ago. And I said, are you sure why this is happening? He wasn't sure. He, but he said, diamond rates have gone up a lot for him. Uh, so, so anyway, getting back to the word, diamond is using they saying they didn't do this intentionally, but it's happened because they lost DC. They lost 33%. Okay, so let's go on. Post reopening from coronavirus directed shutdown. Diamond Comic Distributors have been charging customers increased shipping rates for product, eating into comic book retailer profits at the same time as it runs a promotional campaign intended to raise funds for those same retailers. Uh, retailers tell The Hollywood Reporter payments to Diamond have increased recent weeks, in part because of a relatively new policy that sees orders divided up into more shipments, meaning more charges. That's not the only concern retailers have as stores struggle to get back on their feet. And Brian Hibbs, I was paying roughly 6% of wholesale on shipping from Diamond pre-pandemic. This has raised up to approximately 10%. And we've had single weeks rise as high as 25%, said Brian Hibbs, owner of Comics Experience and Comics Experience Outpost in San Francisco. Diamond denied that it was an intentionally increasing shipping costs. With Chris Powell, Chief Relationship Officer. What the hell? Did you just say customer relations? Relationship officer. What are you like? Sally Jesse Raphael? Um, Chief Relationship Officer of parent company Jeppy Family Ep Enterprise. Jeppy Family Enterprises. Shifting the blame to publishers in an email to the Hollywood Reporter. Again, this is, they're taking turns. So what happens is they were doing this thing where, uh, oh, here comes COVID. Uh, Diamond basically said, we're not shipping books. We're not even shipping books that we already received. We're not even shipping books that we've already been paid for. We're not even paying people out for people who own. We're just gonna stop everything for what was it, about three or four weeks. And then we're gonna restart it on our own schedule, you know, parceling out payments over like 13 weeks. That was them jumping off the seesaw, letting the publishers slam into the ground. Now they're blaming the publishers. Um, our base shipping rates have not changed, but the landscape in which we are all operating has. The freight costs increase as a percentage of an order's value as the weight decreases. Smaller shipments cost more to ship per pound than large shipments. So we are now in a, a spiral. And you know, obviously, when you once you get into that spiral, once you get into the vortex, everything accelerates. We're in the second half of the year, and this, as coronavirus like goes away, you know, and we're getting like, jeez, like, like thirty deaths in the state per day, um, and it, it, you know, uh, in the whole the whole country, it's been going down for weeks, and it'll continue to go down. It's gonna problems are gonna ramp up because it's been this thing where you got this weekly grind. Everyone's got this weekly grind: new revenue, new books, new revenue, new books, and then it stops. And then the publishers stop making stuff, and then the you know the distributor stops distributing. And the publisher stop making. Then the distributor starts distributing again, but just distributing the stuff that they already got. Meanwhile, the publishers have laid people off, pencils down, they're making less stuff. I mean, last week was just a skip week. DC and Marvel was like, eh, nothing. I think they did some digital stuff, but yeah, nothing. Yeah, nothing for the stores. Um, and so, but then the pencils up, it's only been a couple of people saying that, you know, hundreds of people got pencils down, a couple people got pencils up. So there's this giant embolism, this, you know, air pocket in the veins, moving through it. Um, so basically in what May and June, basically no comics got made, which means a couple months from now, I mean, Marvel's fled the shelves. They have enough comics already made, already finished, maybe not printed, but the print file is done. They don't need to hire anyone. They got enough stuff to last until next year. 
Uh, so it's this kind of horrific spiral of not distributing, not books, stop making books, now we're distributing, now there's not books, it's a disaster. So now, when there are orders, like there were for this week, where there's no Marvel, no DC, and just dribs and drabs of indie stuff, you don't that get that economies of scale. You know, economies of scale is you do more of something, you print more books, the cost per book is, is lower. You know, obviously, you know, a, a one pound uh, is, you know, this much, but uh, 10 pounds is not t 10 times as much as shipping the one pound. Sometimes it is, but usually you get these, you know, economies of scale. A number of publishers have reduced their publishing activities in response to the COVID related challenges in the retail space. And that was appreciated by many retailers who saw the need for a slower ramp up to full production. As we approach a more normal capacity, that's a meaningless term, shipment sizes will increase and the freight as a percentage of the shipment's value will go back down. Here's the problem. With all these shenanigans with Diamond, DC noped out. DC basically told to mail order services, make yourself a distributor and we'll go exclusive through you. So Diamond lost like 33% of their comics, which means those shipments are never going to be, you know, because they wouldn't ship like, here's your Marvel box, here's your DC box. No, it would be one box. It would have your Marvel, your DC, your Image, your Dark Horse, whatever in there. Um, and obviously multiple boxes, if, you know, because uh, I think they would put like 30 or so in. It's always going to be 33% less, like forever, um, uh, because of losing DC. Some discounts from the various shippers are passed along to retailers, but are also based on specific weight thresholds. Some retailers are missing those thresholds now but we hope we'll soon exceed them again. That means basically you were told you have to order like this minimum and they're not even doing that. The comic book industry ground to a halt in late March when Diamond announced that it was temporarily suspending distribution of new product because of concerns surrounding the coronavirus outbreak. A number of stores had already been forced to temporarily close due to local shutdowns with publishers reducing or suspending releases as a result. A week later, Diamond announced that it was planning to withhold payment to vendors due to a lack of, quote, consistent payments from our customers. Diamond restarted shipments in late May. Hmm, thank you. Golf clap. Announcing the branding back to comeback at the same time, intended to combine a promotional campaign with a fundraising effort for nonprofits assisting struggling comic book retailers. In his email, Powell also suggested that retailers experiencing shipping cost increases might be suffering from attempting to diversify their supply chain. So he's going to blame it on them. Again, DC has to find a, a, a workaround for Diamond not distributing. Now Diamond is blaming it on DC and the store for having a workaround. They just should have just sat there and wait, apparently. A consolidation of orders from one source has always been the best way to maximize overall freight cost containment and was a strength of Diamond's distribution that greatly benefited retailers for the past 25 years. It was a strength until it was an incredible weakness, until it was a single point of failure. Powell wrote, Retailers who have now moved some of their purchases to other distributors, whether by their choice or when forced to do so by DC's recent changes, are experiencing a reduction of that benefit, and we are seeing their overall costs go up for goods. They're going to have to look at their ordering procedures as part of a holistic process, determining how savings in one place may result in additional costs in another and make the best decisions for their businesses. Uh, <laughs> the mention of DC's recent changes is a reference to DC, the number two publisher in the US comic book market, cutting ties with Diamond following signing up with two new distributors, UCS and Lunar, during Diamond's COVID shutdown. That's how it's gonna be. You know, you don't do your job, they'll find someone who does. Uh, the argument that retailers would benefit from consolidating their distribution sources is far from convincing to everyone. Brian Hibbs says, I haven't bought any graphic novels that I didn't have to from Diamond in something like a year and a half. We are a book focused comic book stop and Diamond's shipping Policies have cost them tens of thousands of dollars in orders from stores like mine, who long ago abandoned graphic novel purchases from Diamond for better terms. Big volume graphic novel stores who have switched didn't especially tell Diamond, so I personally believe that Diamond's metrics 
and understandings of sales and volume potential are fatally off. Wasn't he in the the, the live stream with Jeppy and he was Oh my gosh. Well then there is no pleasing you. The problem retailers have with diamond shipping goes beyond simply cost, as it turns out. For decades, we used an independent trucking company for our weekly deliveries, along with most other stores in the Bay Area. Our local shipping group dissolved after some terrible service, and most of us switched over to Diamond's standard UPS delivery. It was the worst six months in the history of the shop. Boxes were lost, smashed, delivered late, and caused thousands of dollars in damages to the product a month. Eventually, Higgins teamed with another retailer to receive shipments via FedEx Freight. He explained, our weekly shipment now comes shrink-wrapped on a pallet and held for pickup at a local FedEx hub, and the cost is well below the price we were paying Diamond directly for the UPS shipments. Damages from shipping are almost zero. Multiple customers have even commented on the fact that our book seemed to be in better shape than other local stores, and the shipments are always on time. Diamond is unrepentant about the increased financial burden on comic book stores at this time, judging by Powell's response to The Hollywood Reporter. The, you know, the Diamond the guy says, In most of the cases we've researched so far, the cost increase was caused by the factors I outline above. So we have not issued freight credits. We have always done so when we identify an error on our part, but in most cases, it's simply the economics of shipping the goods. He writes that again. So... It's such a strange thing because for decades I've heard nothing about complaints about Diamond. And then when DC dared to encourage other people to become distributors, well, half the industry brought out the long knives and the other just like stayed quiet. Single point of failure, damaged books for decades, a freaking monopoly that turned out to not be benign. And now they're just pointing fingers, taking turns, jumping off the seaside. It's a freaking disaster. Mainstream comic book industry, you are not ready for the fourth quarter of this year and the first quarter of next year. It is going to be a freaking bloodbath. So anyway, thanks for watching. Subscribe. Make sure you're still subscribed. Hit the bell for notifications. Thanks to everyone. Give them to the GoFundMe, the Patreon, and the Indiegogo. Jawbreakers Grand Bazaar graphic novel. The Expendables Go to Hell graphic novel. Pandemic comic book and do as you're told about it or no. And I will have new and old comic book reviews up all this week. Thanks, bye.